chances are that if you are in a college or you teach at a college, you have often wondered about the importance of a humanistic education. Today I'll briefly talk about my understanding of humanities and why do I think a humanistic education, especially in today's world, is of extreme importance. So let's have a conversation about it. So first, what do I mean by humanities or a humanistic education? So according to my understanding, humanities include all those disciplines like literature, literary studies, philosophy, theology, history, mostly all the disciplines that deal with either the crafts produced by human beings, that deal with human history, or that deal with human consciousness and its understanding of the world and life. All of these are what we consider humanistic disciplines. So a humanistic education on the surface of it could very easily mean you studying literature in the English department or in the French literature department or you taking a philosophy course or a history course or a course in theology. All of these are part of a humanistic education. If you go by the discipline and those disciplines that are defined as humanistic or humanities. But in my opinion, a more important and nuanced understanding of a humanistic education is the kind of education that enables us to think critically about the world, about what happens in it, or to think critically about whatever is proffered to us as a form of knowledge or a practice. So truly then, a humanistic education is an education that enables us to read cultural, literary, historical, philosophical texts, makes us aware of them, but more importantly, it gives us the intellectual ability to critically analyze any given text and any given situation. So if we go by the second more expansive definition of a humanistic education, then it doesn't matter what your major is. The humanistic education absolutely will enable you to do whatever you choose to do in life in a better and more conscious and effective way. So let's think about it a little more. Okay, let us assume that you are a business major and you're studying marketing or you're studying business finance and you also are taking or are required to take a course in Intro to Philosophy, a course on Intro to World Literature. And since you're focused on your business degree to you, those humanistic courses might come across as unimportant. But first of all, think of what skills will you need in the business world. If you are in marketing, you will need the skills to understand what is it that people prefer, what is it that appeals to them, what is it that they like or dislike and why. So if you have taken a course in literature or philosophy and they have encouraged you to think critically, even about fictional characters as to why do they behave the way they do, how are problems resolved in a story, you can take those critical skills and apply them to your marketing solutions. If you look at the marketing world right now, there is a whole field of research called as user experience design. What do the user experience researchers do? They go and seek out how do people interact with an app? What do they expect? They interview people 
and then help the designers design digital and material products that match people's expectations. So a humanistic education then can give you these insights, not just into human behavior, but also human expectations, but more importantly, how to approach human beings in the real world in a way that you're convincing and that you know, you're sincere and that they trust you. So that's one very utilitarian aspect of a humanistic education. But humanistic education is more important than just that. So one of the leading scholars in my field of study, which is post-colonial studies, Gayatri Spivak suggests in one of her books, Other Asias, that the role of the humanities is to train the imagination of our students. And this is a direct quote from the book. But that training, what she explains further, is at both ends of the global divide. What does she mean by it? What she means by it is that a humanistic education, let's say if you live in the United States, cannot just be about great literary texts of America, but rather it must also incorporate other places from the world, literature and peoples and their lives. And then at the other end of the global divide, the developing world, the third world, the students there must also learn through a humanistic education, how do people live their lives in the West, in America. So that's the two poles that she's talking about. But there is a cautionary note here. As teachers, while it's our job to train your imagination, our job isn't to give you our way of looking at the world, no because that would be an imposition, that would be coming top down. Rather, our job is to encourage you to explore and think critically about any given literary text, talk about it, and then form your own opinions. The ability to think critically and the ability to empathize with characters who or from a far-flung part of the world is what will enable you to develop a kind of empathetic, compassionate personality. And that is one of the most important roles of humanistic education. So let me give you an example. Let us say you are reading a novel from Nigeria and you are reading about a female character and her struggles. Bushi Emeshita's Joys of Motherhood, for example, which has Nueno as a main character. Now, as a reader of that text, you could either read the main character as absolutely foreign and imagine that that's something you will never experience, or you could think about her life see the forces that impact her life, the local customs, but also the global systems like colonialism, capitalism. And maybe that would create this room where you will think of this character in an empathetic way. And if you do that towards a character, chances are, in real life when you encounter someone who is different from you. You will look at their experience from their perspective and try to understand it. Now that's not just everyday interactions with people you do not know. As a manager, as someone who works in the corporate sector, this ability to look at someone's conduct or someone's behavior within the context of their lives and struggles will enable you to become a more empathetic, compassionate, but also a more understanding manager. And that is what a humanistic education can enable you to do. It 
transforms your actions from mechanistic actions driven by law and driven by regulations to humanistic actions where we are not afraid of feeling sympathy or empathy for others and where we try to understand actions of others, not from simply our own expectations and perspective, but within the context of their experiences, their limitations and possibilities. So that's another, in my opinion, the most important aspect of a humanistic education. It gives us knowledge, gives us critical skills, but it enables us to read a text, a situation, and to interact with a real-life person without forcing our standards or our way of looking of the world on them, but rather trying to understand them within the context of their experiences. So that, in my opinion, in sum, is the most important function of a humanistic education. Now, if you teach humanities, I would like to share a few experiences and a few thoughts of how I run my classes and who has taught me about these things. So let's talk about that a little bit. So by far, the biggest influence on my pedagogical practices has been the work of Paulo Freire, especially Pedagogy of the Oppressed. There are a lot of things that I've learned from that book, but the most important thing that I learned from his book is the distinction between the banking model of education and the problem-posing model of education. Now, I have a whole series, a playlist on the book where I've read the whole book and discussed it. But here, briefly, the banking model of education is where the teacher becomes or assumes the role of being the source of all knowledge and the students are passive recipients who take that knowledge and then reproduce it. Against that, what he proposes is a model of education where students participate in their own learning, where they can suggest changes to the curriculum, where they can even suggest what's the best way that they learn to the teacher and the teacher would then incorporate that in his, her or their teaching methods. The second major influence that I had and who, uh, the person whose work I follow is Mark Brocker, Dr. Mark Brocker, who is a professor of literature at Kent State. He's one of my dear former colleagues and also a mentor. And I always go back to his book, Radical Pedagogy, because he draws from the works of Eric Erickson and others in recommending that our students, when they walk into our classes, they feel that their identities, social identities, could be under threat, and they're trying to protect those, right? So our job as teachers of humanities is to conduct the class in a way where they don't feel threatened and where their identities become more expansive. And once they do that, then they'll be able to handle knowledge that might be foreign to them and different to them more easily and will be more receptive to that. So these are two people that I rely on. I've also read other people, like John Tagg has a beautiful book called The Learning Paradigm College. And that book basically discusses how to change our college curriculum and our teaching methodologies from outcome-based classes to the classes which are focused on learning and not just repetition and result producing. So these are some of my influences. There are many more, but I try to read constantly about critical pedagogy and about new innovations in it, both intellectual and material, and then incorporate it in my classes. So humanities education, even though I defined it in terms of disciplines, is also increasingly multidisciplinary and cross-disciplinary and interdisciplinary. So most people who teach literature these days will also 
be focusing on issues that emerge from the philosophical domains like gender and equity and equality studies, post-colonial studies, economics, political science. My own work published and teaching has always been informed by macroeconomics, by an understanding of Marx, or an understanding of how the social systems work, the social systems theories. So it's highly interdisciplinary. And I think humanistic education is also increasingly interdisciplinary, and it is important for it to be so, so that you don't draw this line, this thought belongs not to literary studies, but Department of Economics, and this thought belongs to political science. Rather than that, we should be seeking out information from our colleagues as professors in political science in social science, in economics, as to where the thought is right now, and then see how much of it we can incorporate in our teaching and in our research. After all, the authors and writers whose work we are teaching, if we are teaching contemporary fiction or poetry, live in this world, and hence their lives and imagination is impacted by this world, or they try to imagine a different world, right? What kind of a different world are they imagining? What would be its politics? What would be its faith system, right? What would be its economics? So hence, keeping our own understanding of humanities interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary, I think is important for us as teachers, but also for the students. So overall then, to conclude, no matter what your major is, a humanistic education will enable you to encounter different cultures through literary texts, different modes of thinking through philosophy, let's say, different histories that are not necessarily your histories, all enabling you to look at the world differently, probably in a more nuanced way, to experience it differently and to develop a cross-cultural, empathetic identity that can help you in your scholarship if you become a scholar, but that can also help you in any profession that you choose in the world, because the world increasingly is more diverse, and one needs to understand subtleties of different cultures and subcultures in order to do well in it, but also in order to be a better human being in it. So that's all I had to share today. Just some thoughts. Let me know what you think. I'll be back with more. Stay safe, take care, and I will see you next time. Until then, peace and love.